Hi guys, I'm Nancy and I'm going to show you how to solve a system of linear equations using the substitution method, which sounds way more complicated than it actually is, so don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do it, it's much easier than it sounds, and you'll have it down in no time. Okay, so say that you have to solve a system of equations using substitution. What does that mean? It just means find x and y. Find the x and y values or numbers that work for both of these equations in the system that make both of them true. And if you have to solve using substitution, the substitution way, there are three steps that you can always follow to solve. Okay, so these are the three steps you can always use for substitution. The first thing is to solve for y or x in either equation. Get x equals or y equals, x alone or y alone in one of the equations, whichever one's easier you choose. Then take that and plug it into the other equation that you haven't used yet and solve. And then the last step is use whatever number you just got when you solved to find the other variables. If you already solve for x, you use that to solve for y, and vice versa. So let's try it for this one. And like I said, the first step is get x alone or y alone in either equation. It's really up to you. So take a look at what you have, what you're given, and you decide for yourself which one would be easier to solve for y or x. And when I'm looking at this, it would definitely be the first equation because that one that one already has y alone as a term. There's a 1 there, but we don't write that. So if we use this one to get y equals on one side, y alone on the left side, we'd only have to do one thing, subtract off the 2x, move this term to get rid of it. So this would be the easiest, this one would be the easiest choice to solve for y in that one. So let's do that. Since right now there is a 2x added to the y, if we want to get y completely alone, totally alone on the left side, we need to do the opposite of this addition and subtract off a 2x from both sides to move it to the right side. Okay, so when you subtract 2x from both sides, it cancels over here and you just have y equals 11 minus 2x. So the next step is number two, take that, what you just found for y, this 11 minus 2x, and plug it in to the other equation that you haven't used yet, the second one. Take all of what you found for y and plug it in for y in this equation. This is the substitution part of it. I'll show you how this works. Okay, so we took the y expression that we got from getting y alone and we plugged it all in in place of y here. So we substituted in for the y in the other equation and it looks like this. So this is the part that we inserted or put in. Okay, so from here you just want to simplify so that you can hopefully solve for something clean it up and simplify it. And the way to do that is definitely to get rid of the parentheses, but when you do open the parentheses, you have to take the negative four and apply it to both terms inside. So when you open this up, you can't just take away the parentheses. Remember, you have to multiply every term inside by negative four. So let's do that. And just in case you're confused, I really did take this minus 4 and I multiplied both the 11 by that to get negative 44 and also the negative 2x because they both get affected by it and negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8 so that term when you get rid of the parentheses is plus 8x. So this is getting closer and closer to solving for x. You just want to combine like terms so 7x and 8x it's, together that's 15x. 
And you can also move this number, this constant, to the right side. So get all your x's on the left, all the numbers on the right, so that you can solve. So since it's minus 44 right now, add 44 to both sides. Okay, so this negative 44 cancels when we add 44. And over here, negative 14 plus 44 turns out to be positive 30. It's like 44 minus 14, which is 30. So now we have 15x equals 30. You want to get x alone, so since it's multiplied by 15 now, you can divide both sides by 15 to get x alone. Okay, so when we divide by 15, 15 over 15 is 1, which is 1x, or just x. So this is just x, what we want, equals 30 divided by 15, which is 2. So now we have an actual number for x. We've solved, we have half our solution, so we're halfway there more than halfway there in terms of the work, thankfully. We have two for x. You've done all of the second step, and there's one last thing to do, which is use that number, actual number that you found, to solve for the other variable. So since we found two for x, we're gonna use that to find y, the number for y. And when you do this, you have a choice. Again, you can use either of the original equations. Either one will give you the right answer, whatever you prefer, whatever is easier. So let's use the first one, it just looks a little simpler. <laughs> okay, so we took the x value 2 and plugged it into this equation. So we have 2 times 2, 2 times 2, plus y, which we don't know yet, we're going to solve for, equals 11 from up here, the original equation. And then you just simplify that and try to solve for y, which you don't know. So if 2 times 2 is 4, so you have 4 plus y equals 11. Subtract off 4 from both sides to be fair and do equally what you do to one side, other. So we have y equals 11 minus 4, which is 7. Great, so we have a number for x, you have a number for y, and then just like typically you put them together into an xy pair for your answer. And you can just write the answer as as this 2 comma 7, which is x comma y, if you want to write it in that form. So that's the answer. There's one solution. This is one solution for the system. It's considered consistent because it has one unique solution. But to be perfectly honest, this is the most basic of the kinds you'll see. And it's important that you saw this, but they can get trickier, unfortunately. And really, you want to know what to do if you don't have just a y or an x already as a term in an equation, if it's more complicated than that. And what if you have to deal with fractions? So very good questions, and you're likely to see stuff like that. So let me show you how to do it. All right, so here's another example of solving with substitution, and it's a little trickier. But the steps are the same. You'll use the same three steps. Don't worry. So first step, solve for x or y in one of the equations, whichever one seems easier. I'm looking at this and I don't see like a clear, obvious choice. I think I'm going to go with the second one. And I'm going to try to get x equals, so x alone on one side. Solve for x this time. That's my choice. You can do whatever you want, but let's try this, try the second equation, and rearrange it. So if we want x alone, first we'll need the 3x term alone, but we definitely don't want this minus 2y here. So to get rid of that, we do the opposite. We add 2y to both sides. All right, so now we have 3x equals 4 plus 2y because the 2y and negative 2y canceled here and the right side is now just 4 plus 2y. But we're not done yet there solving for x because we don't want 3x. We want just x equals on the left. And now since we have 3 multiplied by x, to get rid of it we divide and do the opposite operation. Divide both sides by 3. And before I freak you out with fractions, 
this is what I'm doing. The left side is now just x because 3 divided by 3 is 1 or just 1x or just x. On the right side, everything, every term is getting divided by 3, so both the 4 and the 2y. And how did I get that? The 4 gets divided by 3 separately from the 2y being divided by 3. So 4 divided by 3, 4 over 3, is 4 thirds. And 2y divided by 3 is 2 over 3y, 2 thirds y. Yeah, I know, it's ugly and it has fractions. I did this to you on purpose. I gave you this one on purpose because it's likely that you'll see one like this. Don't worry, you can do it. It's not as bad as it looks. This x expression is now x equals 4 thirds plus 2 thirds y. That's the first step. You've solved for x from one of the equations. Great. The second step is take that and plug it into the other equation, the one we haven't touched yet, and solve. So we already dealt with the second equation. So now take this expression for x, 4 thirds plus 2 thirds y, and plug it in for x in the first equation. So let's do that. All right, so I literally took all of this expression here for x and inserted it in for x in the other equation. So we have negative 6 times all of that, 4 thirds plus 2 thirds y, came from here. Plus 4y is still there, equals negative 8 is still there. And we use this now to try to solve for y. Hopefully we can solve for y. You're going to need to simplify this and open up the parentheses using the distributive property. Remember that the negative 6 will multiply to both terms inside the parentheses. And don't worry, I know it's going to be a little messy with the fractions, but the best way to deal with the fractions, the multiplying of fractions, is think of this negative 6 as negative 6 over 1 so that you can just multiply the fractions straight across. What do I mean? I mean, for instance, for the first term, we'll have negative 6 over 1 times 4 over 3, and we can multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms for the new fraction. So negative 6 times 4 over 1 times 3. Negative 6 times 4 is negative 24. 1 times 3 is 3. That's the new fraction. And then just do the same thing for the second term, 6 over 1, negative 6 over 1, times 2 over 3, so negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. 1 times 3 is 3, and we still have a y. And we still have plus 4y and equals negative 8. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. Negative 24 over 3, hopefully you know that's negative 8. 24 over 3 is 8, so the negative version is negative 8. Same with negative 12 over 3 is negative 4. So plus negative 4y is like minus 4y. And we still have this plus 4y. And we still have equals negative 8. So this is our latest equation, version of the equation. Try to combine like terms. So these y terms, try to put them together. Negative 4y and positive 4y. Negative 4y plus 4y is 0y. They cancel. They cancel, and we only have left negative 8 on the left and negative 8 on the right. That's weird, right? Okay, true confession, I also gave this to you on purpose because this is a special case that you're probably going to see if you do enough of these. But when you get a number equals the same number, something equals itself. If that's what you get when you go through these steps, that means that the answer is infinitely many solutions. And yeah, you can actually just write that. That's, that's the answer. Infinitely many solutions. Why? Because this here, number equals the same number, that's always true. It's true no matter what x and y combination you pick. So for all x, y pairs you can think of, that's always true. 
So all of them work. All xy pairs work. There are many of them. In fact, there's infinite number. Couldn't even count them. That means when you get something that's a number equals itself, the answer for the system is infinitely many solutions. It's a special case. And while we're at it, there's another special case you'll, you'll probably see. And this is the other special case you might see. If you get a number equals a totally different number, so negative 8 equals 4, or negative 8 equals 0, whatever, that's just not true. That's nonsense. It's not true. So your answer will be no solution. There's no solution for x and y because there's no x and y you could come up with that will ever make this true. It's just always going to be false. So there's no solution that will make this work. That's the answer. So those are two special cases, and it's important for you to see them. But don't let it lead you astray from the steps, because those steps are the right way to go for substitution. You might end up with an answer like this, but these steps will always work if there is a solution with actual numbers that you solve for. So those are the steps. And if you're thinking of trolling my video about how the elimination method would have been better, would have been faster for this one. You might be right, but that's not what this video is. This video is about the substitution method, so that's what we're doing. So now really quickly, let me show you just a few more systems that might look a little weird, but that you can still definitely use substitution for. All right. So these might seem a little different, but you still use substitution in the same steps. Like for instance, if your system just looks a little out of order, like y terms are before x terms, or things are on the wrong side, you still use substitution, just take whatever they gave you and start from there, try to get y alone, y equals or x equals. If one of the equations is already x equals form or y equals form, kind of already solved partly for you, that's good, that's your lucky day because it's going to be faster. You can just take that and plug it into the other equation right away and go on from there. If you see something that's really simple looking with just x and y's and x and y's and the only real numbers you see are on the right, you still use substitution. It's the same steps. It throws some people off, but Try to get x alone or y alone, like here you could just subtract y from both sides and go on. And then finally, if both equations start with y equals, don't panic. You still take one and plug it in for the other. So it's going to end up being like setting these two equal to each other, these two right sides. So you'll have x minus 7 equals negative x plus 1. So I hope this video helped you understand how to solve with substitution. I know algebra is exactly what you wanted to be doing right now. It's okay, you don't have to like math, but you can like my video, so if you did, please click like or subscribe.